happy. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Nice to see that many people. And who is here? Okay. And before I start my talk, uh, I would like to give you two warnings. One is about the fire drill. We already had it, so there is no fire alarm. So if it goes up, then you have to go out. But the second warning is more important. The second warning is that what you're going to hear is my personal view. It's not a classic thermodynamics. It's my own perception of about this, basically, subject in science. Okay. So, and also, you will see that I will be using some unorthodox examples. And the reason I'm doing it because I'm hoping to get the feedback from you. So at the end of my talk, even in the middle of the talk, please do not subsidize me. If you have any critical sort of views or comments, please speak up. And that is all I get from this, uh, this presentation, because I know what people think. And somehow, it, it demonstrates my views about how the world of the teaching has changed. In the past, you had a teacher who knew something you didn't know. But if you really want to know laws of thermodynamics, you don't need it. You just Google laws of, laws of thermodynamics. There are many, many resources. You can read nice pictures and nice graphs, example, etc. So why should you waste your time coming here to listening to me? The reason is that because I think it's good to know things. It's better to understand them, and the best is to feel them. My mission today is not to tell you the laws of thermodynamics, but I am hoping to generate kind of a feeling towards them. And as you know, it's, it's considered as one of the abstract, which is not actually subject in engineering or science. But I will be trying to, to present that is not. It's far closer to life and everyday life than people expect. So please speak out at the end and also remember this is my personal view. Okay, last year I had to buy a flat fee. And the reason I bought it because I was criticized by my friends and families. I am the last person who still had those CRTT, it's the old fashioned ones. So I bought it. And okay, in every aspect is better than the TV which I have. But one program, my favorite program, is missing on the flat TV. And that favorite program I'm going to to play it for you. <laughs> This is what they call a TV static noise. Okay, one thing, I mean, you may feel that, okay, it's just repetitive, it's not. The most impressive thing about this program, let's say Martians watch this program when they come home, you know, every day, yeah? The most interesting thing about this program is that it never repeats. It looks like, but it's not. You have to watch it thousands, maybe thousands of years in order to see the same program. Because all these spots, black and white, they repeat the and, and that makes this program very unique. Of course, if I play it again, you will see the same thing. But on the CRT, you wouldn't see that. It, will repeat, it never repeats itself. So you can understand why Martians are so interested in this program. Yeah. Please keep this in mind. I will go back to this picture at the very end of the very last slide, yeah? This is just the background about what Martians watch. Okay, let's start the model. So, we know that in nature, there are, there are reactions which happen spontaneously. You don't need to explain, these are the very common ones. For example, these objects fall down. They never go up on their own, and the rivers run down the valley. That's what we do. So let's say we want to start from scratch and model this phenomenon. Okay, very simple model will be say what? Well, we can say that in all cases, the internal energy of the system is reduced. It goes down, always. 
And that is very sensible, easy to understand, easy to feel, and they called it enthalpy. So enthalpy is a part of the energy in nature that we can easily measure it, quantify it, and also, most importantly, we can understand it. We can transform it to the heat, which is quite sensible. I'm rubbing my fingers, fingers get hot. So that is easy. But the problem is that, yes, this is, this is what I mentioned, but the problem is that it does not explain everything. It does not explain here. Imagine that we have two boxes with two different gases inside. I remove the membrane between them. And we are used to think that, of course, the, gas is going, the gases are going to mix up, right? Let's say there is no uh, chemical reaction between these gases, yeah? So we are used to this idea that spontaneously we will get them mixed up here. Okay, but in this reaction, delta H doesn't change because there is no bonding between these atoms. They are identical, no reaction whatsoever. So then the question is that what drives this? what causes that everything gets mixed up. And most importantly, never is not a very good word, but almost never happens in the other, other direction. So, it is, a, it is not just a mix up, it is a kind of energy. I prove that it is a kind of energy, because if this mem I put a member in here, which only the red atoms can move towards the green ones, blue ones, then the pressure inside this will increase. Increasing pressure, it can generate work. So by just mixing, you can extract energy. So whatever this is, this is my personal view, we don't know what it is. All we have to, we have to come up with terminology to explain this behavior of the nature. And what I call it, I call that kind of energy, I call it spaghetti energy. Because it's the tendency of the nature to get mixed up. Scientists, they call it entropy. S for me is the spaghetti. If you forget, you can remember the spaghetti. So it is the tendency in the nature which tries to basically get mixed up and it definitely is an energy. I took this picture yesterday. <laughs> so, I mean, the very first application of thermodynamic is that you would, you would never say that my room is cluttered, you say my room is a high entropy <laughs> room. So, uh, maybe this is a revenge of Alex because he's not here anyway. So, um, yeah, I like this coffee pot, empty pot. Anyway, so, yeah, you see, that is the, that's the reality in life. You clean your room, it goes becomes flatter. You wash your car, it gets dirty. It never happens the other way. You buy fresh food, it gets rotten. You know, it never goes other way around. And that's again back to this uh, behavior of the nature that takes things, you know, in a different direction, in order to maximizes the basically uh, maximizes this uh, randomness in the system. It's the same in the universe. Also, this randomness increases. So let's look at it from very different angle. We go back to our boxes. And then here, we see that generally, when this mixing happening, the system goes to the maximum disorder. And this is exactly the same story with, with the cluttered room. It tries to go to maximize it, it, its disorder. But from very different perspective, effectively, if we open this box, we do not expect to see this, we expect to see that. So it's more likely to see inside the box like this than this one. Please, I should emphasize these two things are completely different way of looking at the same phenomenon. I explain a little bit here. Again, back to the movie with the Martians, you see that this is maximizing the disorder on the TV CRT screen. And also by experience, we are expecting to see this rather than seeing all black or white. We don't see that one. Okay, I just clarify on this matter. When we say it becomes disorder, remember the story with the box, it is the energy. Yeah, by nature, becoming disorder generates energy. But 
towards the most probable state is a banking loss. These two are very different things. One is about energy, you can do work. The other one, what you need when you're betting on horses. But I will present that these two are almost the same thing. But <coughs> to do that, I have to explain that looking at the entropy as energy is a classical thermodynamics, it's easier to understand. But looking at it as a betting odds is what is called statistical thermodynamics. So what do you need? You need a genius physicist to come with one idea and show you the relationship with this one, heat, and the betting odds. OK, you're expecting equations. But I would like to, to propose a small intermission, intermission of the, to this talk. Um, in order to mention what is the relationship with classical and statistical thermodynamics, I have to explain something mathematical. This is the part of my talk, which is again related to the teaching skills. I would like to hear from you whether you like the way I teach maths and compare it the way that they, you've been taught at school, yeah? Let's say we want to model the effect of money and life, yeah? So, y-axis, zero point, I call it quality of life, so above zero I think it is comfort, yeah? and below discomfort, yeah? And x-axis is the money which I'm making, m, correct? So if I earn, or if I have 1,000 pounds, for example, 1,000 pounds per month, I can eat enough, I can pay for my rent, okay, I will not have a fabulous life, but I'm not going to go to sleep hungry. So at 1K, I am neither terribly comfortable or discomfortable, but at this point, my life is on the balance, correct? Now, let's say my income goes down. If my income starts to going down, okay, I have to cut on my travels, then I have to move out of my house because I don't have money, very soon I will be sleeping on the streets. I will not know enough clothes and I will not be able to buy bread. And as you see, the curve is very steep, it's going down. So having it two pounds a day or not having it makes a big difference here, close to minus infinity. Let's say I make more money. I travel more. I change my 20 years old car. So this has to be continuous for the new. And then I buy a villa in Spain. I buy an island, Jaguar, whatever, 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 and that's it. Keeps going. And here it says I have one billion, this is two billion, and this is one million. Yeah. So this curve, it shouldn't break here, actually, my apologies, should be continuous. It is the story of life. Some, if you have one billion income or two billion, doesn't make that much difference in your life. But here, the slope is, you see that the curve is flat enough, yeah? But also, below one, critical number, goes to negative very sharply. And this is how to teach log. That is the log. And log of one is zero. So this, there are different ways to teach math. One math is that, okay, log is this, and then tomorrow you forget. But the logarithm scale is the every story of everyday life. And that is, that is I believe, that I, I, that I, I, I prefer to teach if I want to start teaching a student about the logarithm scale. You see, in the, in the future, in the next of the demonstration, I will need this curve. And that's why I just want you to remember how the logs changes. Okay, we need a genius, yeah? Connect this back to thermodynamics. That genius is my favorite physicist. 
Ludwig Oltzmann. He was Austrian, he was born and died in, he was, he's, he's buried in Vienna. His equation is very simple. It says entropy as an energy depends how many probable states you can have. Very simple. And the K is a Boltzmann, Boltzmann uh, constant. Effectively, it says if you, let's put it this way, if you're playing with five cards or 500 cards or 5,000 cards, the entropy increases as the number of cards increase. But remember the log having uh, 5 million cards or 5 billion cards doesn't make that much difference. The reason that much difference is because when the entropy is so high, within million billions, it doesn't increase sharply with adding more probability or more states to it. And that's why this flat. The negative part of the logarithm doesn't apply to the Boltzmann equation. But Boltzmann was born a little bit too early because he was working on this statistical analysis, statistical mechanics. When the debate about whether atoms exist or don't exist, it was a very hot issue. So it was 50-50. Some people thought the atoms are rubbish, they don't exist. Some people say exist. It was at the end of the 19th century. So Boltzmann got demoralized or maybe depressed, and he thought the atomistic theory has failed. Atoms do not exist or maybe he was, I don't know, some other reasons. So he told all his work, all his glorious work was wasted. He committed suicide just because of this equation. And you see the equation is written above his tomb. The sad thing about Boltzmann is that just a few years later, Faraday in Manchester and J.J. Thompson in Cambridge, they experimentally proved that atoms exist. And that is the saddest thing. I mean, if he was born a little bit late, he could have seen the glory of his work and the fact that atoms really exist. But also, back to this equation and back to this probability of the state. You know solids, they have a very fixed orientation. So when you go from solid to liquid, which atoms are free to move around, there is a huge change in entropy, randomness. But if you go from liquid to gases, that difference is not huge because the system is already random. So that's where this, this logarithm also state comes into effect. Okay, let's talk a little bit less serious. So now, we, we improved our model. We, we started with delta H, it didn't work. We had to add this delta S, spaghetti energy into it. But we know that entropy increases with temperature because as you heat it up, atoms move faster. So the, it's, a com it's a basically combination of the temperature and the entropy and the balance with the energy. So for example, what, what, what we do in the cooking, basically when we cook, well, we're increasing this temperature, entropy increases inside the pot, it breaks down the molecular or whatever the bonds are inside the ingredients, we break them up by increasing temperature and entropy, and that's how we call it the cooking. Okay, it has lots of applications, but I don't want to bother you because not everybody here is material science. For example, one of the applications is that you can, you can use the entropy, and sorry, free energy or the combination of the entropy and enthalpy to find out what is, for instance, gives free energy, which is the combination of this, within temperature. It changes with temperature. As you see, liquid is going down, solid is going down. Both of them will go down, obviously, because uh, entropy is increasing with temperature. But whichever has got the lower free energy in here, solid, below the melting point, and liquid above the melting point will be the stable phase. This is a common sort of uh, application of entropy. It's so back of my car. If you look at it, you can see the Gibbs free energy here. If nature was ruled by only delta H, we couldn't see these patterns. If it was ruled only by entropy, we could see total curves. But we see something different. It has some randomness feature in it, but it's also very ordered. And that is 
why nature movement is the balance between entropy and entropy. This is the heart of the matter for my next talk, which is about nucleation. But I just put it here to prove that, you see, this is the, how it shows that entropy and entropy plays a very important, a more serious application for those who are metallurgists here. It's one of the main reasons thermodynamic, you know, it's one of the main applications of thermodynamic is that this chart tells you how much oxygen you can have in a furnace in order to reduce the oxide, for example, iron oxide, or aluminum oxide to iron. So it's a very useful chart in extracting metallurgy. So for example, you say, okay, I have this much of oxygen and this is, this is for aluminum, I can say it's very high. So you, it, it tells you the amount of the oxygen you have as a function of the temperature. So it's a very useful chart. How they did it, they did it experimentally. They just calculated the alpha G and delta H. So they come up when solid or metal is stable or when the oxide is stable. Okay, now we are getting to a little bit more serious application of what we learned about entropy and entropy. So, when, when we have a very orderly source of energy, let's say fuel, petrol, yeah? You burn it in your car to get mechanical work. Your car moves. But, according to what I said, that the nature is trying to mix up things, yeah? You never get 100% mechanical work, you have to, you will have a loss at the entropy and heat. And that's <coughs> why the force that efficiency cannot be 100%. How you look at it, from my point of view, is a kind of taxation. If you believe in God, God is a kind of tax man. So you have to pay. <laughs> yeah, you have to pay for this loss, and I will explain it a bit later. That, but at the very end, I show that entropy is not so bad. And you will see that it's not always the case that we don't like entropy. Okay, the part of the talks maybe because of interest in the title was I have to find this picture last night to put here. Okay, let's, let's extend the, the concept of entropy and enthalpy to social. Okay, I took this photo in the lobby of the hotel I stay in China. Chinese are very fast in for wedding ceremonial, so they do two weddings a day in that lobby anyway. So let's look at, bride is here, let's look at uh, her relationship, look at, imagine like a bond with the molecule, yeah? With the people, so six guys, six days, and the group. So she has 12 friendships, one partnership in this picture, yeah? Okay, so obviously she has 13 different bonds, and the bonds are like chemical bonds, are like enthalpies. So she's, she has three, 13 different edges, because she's probably closer to some of the girls and the boys than the other ones. She may not know some of them at all, yeah? So she's dealing with 13 different bonds and 13 different conflicts. And conflicts means what? Entropy, and entropy means options, states. So let me explain a little bit. I asked Boltzmann for help. You see, H different for any every relationship. Yeah, we are not keeping the same distance with everybody. We have different distance with every, different people. But S is the option. In here, according to Boltzmann equation, she has more than one option. You can have ten wives, ten husbands, thousands of friends. So S, because the, the S is not zero, it's more than one, you are here. So if conflict, which is temperature, increases, and delta S is not zero, the balance is going to break down, bond will be weaker than the entropy element, and the relationship will break down. So effectively, the bad news is that and conditional law is a fiction. Because you may have very, very strong bonds, but if I increase the temperature high enough, even the entropy is low, it's going to break down the delta H. So that doesn't exist. This delta H in some culture, they call it, they call it uh, <laughs> love at the first start, or whatever, something like that, yeah. 
Yeah, but most famous Persian poem, which is equivalent to Shakespeare's to be or not to be, it says very interesting. It says love looked very simple and present at the beginning. That's it. But then the problems turn up. I think we all experience that. <laughs> so that doesn't exist. So I'm sorry for this bad news, but but I can give you a, one good news is that, okay, maybe it is fiction, but you have a control on temperature. If it's going to be too high, buy a bunch of flour, bring down the temperature. You <laughs> can control the temperature. <laughs> the second good news is that the state number of state available for this lady here is different for, for this lady or this gentleman. As you age, you live with somebody 30, 40, 50, 60 years, your option goes down. So the Delta S... <laughs> no, the Delta S, the Delta S reduces the chance that the relationship breaks down, it goes down. That's true, isn't it? So that's, that's not so bad. It is, a, it is a fiction, but there are some hopes. Yeah? Okay, next picture. You look at this uh, picture, you may think that this, uh, these guys coming out of, I don't know, a kind of a car crash. Look at how stressed they are. Actually, no. They had a one kilogram little boy was stillborn. He, he died when he was born. And you can see the pain on the face of father and mother. OK. I would like to ask you to put this emotional side of the story aside and look at this picture like a Martian. Yeah? When I saw this picture, the first thing came to my mind, I said, this is a singularity point in both manipulation. I explain why. You see, if you look at very logically, they never talked to that boy. The boy was never alive. They don't know him. And there are millions of babies born, you know, every month or every year. But still, the parents going through such a huge shock. Why? We ask Boltzmann. Because, as I said, a child is a one option case. You can have 10 wives and husbands, but you can have one father. Every child is unique. And that uniqueness in Boltzmann equation is the singularity point. You are here. Log one is zero. When the log one is zero, on the main equation, free energy equals to bond. Bond exists in nature, it's a parental bond, and that's how relationship becomes unconditional. The only way relationship becomes unconditional, you have no option. Or maybe if you end up in a desert island with your partner. That's also options, is also closed. something like that. But anyway, this, this is the this is how how story develops basically. So unconditional love is sacred, is kept for certain relationships in the life. So the mother becomes hysterical, very upset. She decides not to give up the baby, so she holds the baby on her chest for two hours. Doctor says dead after twenty minutes resuscitation fate. So after two hours, she talks to the baby, I can't leave you with these faces, and this boy is 10 times bigger here. After two hours, the boy starts to move. And the doctors first reject it, they say it's a reflex, whatever. But then they realize, no, the boy has come back. So that's why it was on the story, uh, it was on the paper. So now you see that one kilogram boy now is about 10 kilograms here. So it has a quite, uh, Happy ending. Anyway, I, if this is not related to my talk. I just didn't want you to live so sad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first law of thermodynamics. You have heard it many times. It, it's getting a bit boring. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I mean, it's obvious. I mean, what it says is that the energy cannot be created. It can always be transformed in more equations. That's what they teach us. You charge your mobile phone. It gets hot a little bit, and it does all those good things for you. So it's always, you cannot have a mobile phone which doesn't have charge in anything. You have to build something. In a, in a different language, it's impossible to build a machine which doesn't need any fuel. That's first of all. It's very simple. And then 
the way I the way I remember is say we don't get something for nothing. You have to pay for it. Yeah, that's the first law, very obvious. Second law, because it relates to entropy, and that's why I'm hoping to. That one is easy to feel. I want, I'm hoping that you feel the second law of thermodynamics is that the one a little bit uh, wordy one is there. It says you cannot extract the heat from hot place and transfer it to 100% work. But let's go simple. And it's a mathematical equation. Entropy always increases with the input. But effectively, this says it's impossible to make 100% efficiency because if you get something very random or even order, transfer it to something order, you have to pay the tax. Paying the tax means you will not be able to recover 100%. Whatever you do, nature has a tendency to move towards randomness in the molecular state. And that's why it becomes impossible to have a machine which is 100% efficient. In my language, I say you don't even get as much as you pay for. That is the taxation. When you buy potatoes over one pound, obviously the real value is not found. Okay. Um, let's, uh, some applications, yeah? Because anyway, we have to. First of all, you can use or I use thermodynamics. Uh, if anybody asks you for diamond, you can say that the free energy of diamond changing to graphite in the room temperature pressure is negative. So diamonds in your hand is like the ice your hand, it will transform back to graphite because free energy is negative. Diamond is formed at high temperature under high pressure. If you take it out of the ground, it will transform back to something which worthless. So don't buy diamonds. But that's a little hypocrisy here. You can use it against your partner, but the fact is that that's true. Thermodynamic never lies, but thermodynamic never tells you how fast things happen. So yes, it, it will happen, but maybe in very, very long time. Millions, I don't know, million years past, diamond goes back to this. So we call it use or abuse, but it's up to you. This is my office at home, yeah? No, I am not showing off. I am showing you how I cheat using thermodynamics. It is, it is average, it's not extremely tidy or whatever, you can see the pens are a bit high entropy here and high entropy here. But in order to keep that my desk so tidy, it needs lots of energy. Remember, to put to decrease the entropy, you need energy. And entropy is energy by nature. So I have to spend a lot of time, all the time, cleaning clean this desk. But thermodynamic doesn't say entropy increases everywhere. It can increase locally. The whole system increases, but not every point. So I can use that concept, and you can see my drawer. <laughs> so I drop everything I don't need it in the drawer next to my desk. So the entropy of the, of the office maybe is not so different from the first one we saw from Alex's lab. Uh, but, <laughs> but kind of, you see that you can use thermodynamic to manipulate, you know. And this is very useful. It, it has, and this is not just about my office. It happens in the nature. You see, if the entropy was always increasing, increasing, how we get these beautiful features in the nature? These are very low entropy things. So how nature creates such a low entropy? The answer is that in the whole system, when these are generated, entropy was increasing, but in one point, entropy is decreasing. Same as how likely is that atoms come together and form one eye. It's incredibly small. But the fact that human being is formed because it comes through step by step. Molecules, you know, form crystals, crystals, so very basic, basically like viruses, bacteria, etc., etc and it comes up until it becomes more complicated. So the, the message is that the universe entropy increases not everywhere in certain selected points. Okay, now uh, going to the back that you now have some idea about uh, entropy, entropy, etc., and balance of these things. 
I would like to play a very short song for you. If possible, please uh, uh, consider every sentence comes on the screen from completely uh, thermodynamic point of view. It is a love song, but uh, please try to look at it as like a motion, okay? <laughs> made a small change towards the <coughs> to the lady. Anyway, thermodynamic <laughs> <they're> watching. <laughs> uh, in this area, uh, okay, some of them are obvious thermodynamic point of view, but let's let's look at the every breath you take. The oxygen goes to your lungs. Yeah? It exchanges the oxygen with the blood and that's based on entropy. And move is obvious, mechanic, let's say bond, yeah? When you break something you should never admit it first. You always say that, <laughs> I, because breaking, you first increasing the entropy, secondly, you're generating a new face, new surface. So you always, you break an expensive china at home, mother's china, you just say that, mom, I just increased the surface. <laughs> you know? no, literally, I mean, these are just happening. So when you break a bond, that's what happened, every step you make is also, you are changing the chemical energy inside your body, mechanical, it takes you up the stairs, you're losing the heat behind. Okay, thermodynamics is, is everywhere in every aspect. And this kind of brings me back to the last slide. It's good news for you. And the last slide, I have to go back to the Martian's favorite program. You see, we accepted that this never repeats itself unless you watch it for a very, very long time, correct? But it's not, not only there, it is it never, all the spots become black or white. Maybe in million years or billion years, yes, one second all the while. And the reason it doesn't, because of the entropy in the nature. The same reason every molecule in my body is vibrating randomly in different directions. But I don't evaporate in front of you because the same reason that the amount of the light which is coming from this screen is pretty much constant. Number of molecules in my body, even in my fingertip, is far, far more than the number of pixels on the ordinary CRT TV. So it is virtually possible, not impossible, that I evaporate from the But how the chances is extremely small. So we are kind of lucky living in the world that we are relatively very, very big compared to the size of atoms. If we get a smaller atom gets big, the world will be horrible. So, let's imagine a world without entropy. If there was no entropy, what would happen? You didn't need to clean your, uh, you didn't need to clean your room, for instance, because there was no tendency to go to get cluttered. We could make a machine which are hundred percent efficient, but because no entropy, this pro Martians will be bored because it will start repeating itself. It will be the same pixel, you know, repeating itself. So it will not be as exciting as what you see now because there will be no entropy. The, the presence of entropy is very important. It's also, there are some drawbacks. For example, let's say if you are sitting here, there is a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen but we are not worried that suddenly oxygen goes that side of the room and this side we get suffocated because we're relying on the entropy. We think that this will not happen. Imagine that world will be a new somebody got died in the car park because oxygen molecule 
move that way faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is a yeah. But you are you are taking it for granted. Basically, that's that's uh, that's what it can happen anyway. Um, maybe I had some more examples, but yeah. Yes, and also the, again, I think I gave you the, all the possible cases. For example, in human body, yeah, if entropy didn't interfere, what would happen is that oxygen, which dissolves in your bloodstream, would then mix up with the blood. Some part of the body will get too much oxygen. Some part of the body will get less oxygen. As you see, that entropy is playing. Although we pay for it, we get something out of it. It's not just a bad thing. So the, my final conclusion is that. In life and universe, probabilities are important, but not possibilities. It is possible that tomorrow my GP says I have a cancer. It is possible that tomorrow I win a lottery. But I am neither sad, I am neither happy. Because most likely, hopefully, none of them will happen. <laughs> so when talking about possi possibilities are not important. Possibly everything is possible according to the Boltzmann atomistic theory. But what matters is the probability and how they develop in the life. And I look forward to your comments. <laughs>